Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another evening of porting via ports with yours truly, Mech Merlin. Tonight, as you guys can see from some of my Discord messages, I am porting the most exciting community project of 2017. I'm going to take you all on a little trip through the time to through the time lapse, I guess. <laughs> but what am I talking about? Of course, I am talking about the Exent. The Exent all the way from 2017, a very thoroughly hyped board that had some issues with the group buy, but eventually, eventually it got to most people. So yeah, before we continue, we have to answer the most important question. What is Merlin drinking? And tonight I'm drinking one of my favorite ports. I know it's 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 actually been a while since I drank any port, but here we go. We're drinking this. This is from Washington. Whidbey Island is one of the many islands here in Washington that tourists come to visit. Very beautiful place to go. If you ever make it to Washington, I highly recommend visiting. And, you know, if you ever find these in your grocery store, highly recommend trying this out too. This one is a 19% alcohol port. You can pick this up from your grocery store for, I'd say... I think I picked it up for 16 just because here in Washington um, they're doing some kind of uh, support your local winery thing so everything's like 20% off but I think these are normally 22 bucks 22 bucks so yeah here we go let's um let's go play some music let's play some music while I pour one of my favorite glasses of wine Thicky Jimmy says, ooh, spicy. Yeah, who who is here tonight? I see Zark, Thicky Jimmy, Alan Gonzaldic, Bond Boy, and earlier I, I saw Anonym subscribing, so thank you so much, guys. I, I also see a Scroby. Who else? Who else? All right, that's all the people talking. Here we go. The board that I will be using tonight is the Hive 60 prototype with Waldo 60 PCB. Um, you know, I guess it took well over a week, but my paint job is no longer so, so smelly. <laughs> Here we go. Bond Boy's been to Whidbey Island. Awesome, awesome. I've been probably four times since I've come here. Mmm, yep, that is exactly how I remember it. Mmm, delicious, delicious. So something that I've noticed with port, um, port that's actually from Porto over in Portugal, all of them have this seal that said, oh, from the Duolo Valley or something. And they're all like screw on caps, right? Port from Washington or from every other port that I've seen that's outside that area comes with a cork. I'm like, hmm, that's really odd. I wonder why they did it that way. <laughs> Duncan Yoyo, -Yo, I see that you've made it. Thanks for joining in. If you're curious what we're doing tonight, we are doing the Exent. So here we go. Let's talk a little bit about this board here. The Exent was made during a time in our community where zero degree angled, um, flat profiles, low profile boards were still a thing this was 2017 and if you look at the date right here that's january of 2017. but yeah just from quick pictures you see that it's got underglow support you know check out that feet and the most amazing thing about this like just i i just had to read through this entire thread again because i was like holy crap it's been such a long time but check this out the price for a standard kit standard kit of this was 180 bucks and the premium kit was 250 and at the time at the time i remember reading this and being like man that's really pricey but now you look at this you're like wait that's not really that's like a lot of quote-unquote custom boards well well exceed that Let's see my Tom says that's a pretty cheap premium yeah I know right 
So let's see. Bon Boy says never been to a via porting. Quick summary. Basically putting via on two boards so people can use the via app. <laughs> My Tom says for nowadays. Yeah, I know. It's and check this out. Look at the names under that. Originative, Rama, TGR, and a a scenic. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name right. These are big names. Big names in the community. Basically, they all came together to make this board. I believe Rama manufactured the case. TGR made the PCB. And I think the design was done by Quad Cube, if I remember correctly, Quad Cube. And it was sold through Originative Co. So yeah, it was a multi, multi-person group by hyped up a lot but if I remember correctly the group buy was complete crap actually like people didn't get their units for a very very long time this was if I had to guess this was also around the time that um Rama had just started up as well so I guess he was still you know finding his ropes <laughs> Vicky Jimmy says porting via ports while drinking port indeed because I'm porting a board while drinking port. <laughs> but yeah. Check this out. Um, 65%. So already back in 2017, people were wanting 65%. Look at the layout supported here. All that gets us split, split space bar. Let's see what else. You could buy additional PCBs. So the thing about this board, the thing about this board is because this was a TGR made board, the PCB was still boot map or client. So back in, let's see, when did I first do this code? Back in, I'd say 2018, 2019 or something, I actually ported this board into QMK. But recently someone men messaged me in Discord saying, hey Merlin, um, you know, Max F Live is doing a build of an exempt right now does this work with via and i was like mm, i don't think so in fact i haven't heard of that board in such a long time so i figured i'd do it today just to get rid of all boot mapper client support dicky jimmy says any news on porting via for the mark 65 i have not been asked to do it i have not been contacted so i have no clue who is doing that project very cool see any more pictures here look Yuxi's Yuxi's involved 12 degree for some nice stock oh my gosh okay so let's go look let's go look at the very last post here the very last post was was going through keyboard history here was actually in January of 2017 I'm gonna go ahead and lock this for OP Oh my gosh. Here, let's actually look at the group buy. Here we go, here we go. This is the group buy. What I was looking at was the interest check. Look at all that. Look at all that. It's the bottom. Catweet says, is there somewhere to learn how to port? You are watching it right now. In fact, I have several of these VODs already up on YouTube. I think I'm up to... I think I've got I've got at least 50 of these. Every single one follows roughly the same procedure, but since it's a different keyboard, it is a little bit different. Yeah, so check this out, check this out. Fully supporting underglow. All that good stuff. And you even had the option to buy a GMK set specifically made for the Exent. <laughs> there we go. Not sure if these are... No, these these are definitely renders. Renders. But yeah, I... This is probably one of the boards you'll see in the community that has the largest bezels. Look at that. Look at that. That's... I think that's... Two, two inches, maybe? On each side? And the top and bottom is, is at least an inch. It was so thick. <laughs> Out of curiosity, does anyone on chat actually own this board? Because if you do, that's... I'd love to hear some of your feedback from this. 
Gavin Go says, looks like a Rama M50. Well, actually, the very first iterations of this, I think was called an M65 something. M65 something, just because it was meant to be a Rama board. Jomi says, the thicker the better. That's, that's, that's what I hear. <laughs> was there a reason for those thick bezels? Design. It's a, it's a completely a design choice. It was a design by Rama at the time. And okay, looks like they did increase the prices from the from from the interest check. It was 198 for the basic and 275 for the premium kit. And you had all of these additional options. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. But yeah, if you guys want to see the QMK port, I believe I did that sometime early last year and it's definitely on YouTube. So check that out if you want to know that process. Today's process will strictly cover adding VIA to your board and only that. My Tom says previously known as M67A. There we go, there we go, there we go. Gavin Go says not going for crazy bezels now. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the S7 Elephant. That's a good point. I've. I've actually always wondered if the S7 Elephant was was inspired by this. Here, let's see if I can find the S7 Elephant photo. S7 Elephant. Yeah, I'd say that's really similar, right? But the difference with the S7 Elephant is it's actually a high profile case and it's angled. Whereas the Exent was actually flat and you had to add feet to it. Let's see. Redeem says, ask me anything. What is your question? Whitpack says, how are you? I, I am doing good. Thanks for using all your points for that, man. Doing good. It's a Tuesday evening. I actually finished a major project at work. So I'm feeling really good about myself right now. I've been pouring over it eight hours, eight to 10 hours a day for the last week. So I finally finished it today and I'm like, oh, I can breathe. So I'm feeling very good. <laughs> Javon says, what's good, my dude? Nothing much, man. Just enjoying my favorite glass of port tonight. Talking about the board that we'll be doing. But yeah, speaking of the board, I no longer have this board because I have sent the board over to the person who who sent it to me and he he's in the Netherlands so it's not like I can just go and grab it back but you know th the thing with via is a large part of it does require hardware so what I'm gonna do tonight is do as much as I can in software then send the files to the to the people who were asking me about this and hopefully they'll respond back if not I guess we won't have a fully functioning port well it'll be functioning to the best of my ability Alan says, what is the spoken word reward? You will you will have to find out. <laughs> Whitpack says, did you do the Southpaw 75 V2 build? Not yet. I I expect that to be sometime in November. November, December, who knows? Whenever prototypes come in. Alright, alright, alright. Let me set up the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And what do we need? All right, all right, okay. So for those of you viewing this for the first time, via is a GUI for QMK firmware. VIA cannot exist without QMK firmware on your board. So the first part in porting VIA or having VIA enabled on your board is to tweak the QMK firmware. So here we go. This, this is QMK. This is QMK. This is the QMK code for the Exant, which I wrote way back in, what's the date? So I wrote this. Do I have a date anywhere here? 2019 I wrote this in 2019 pretty cool so the to put via on your board it comes in two parts you first have to modify 
the QMK firmware, and then you have to create a VIA file. So we'll talk about the QMK firmware here first. Here we go. My Tom says, just check, no Plonk support. Oh, for the SP75. <laughs> Javon says, is Plonk compatible with VIA? Um, it could be. It could be. Looks like my wife just got home. Hi, hi, honey. <laughs> all right, all right. So where were we? Okay. So, th so this is called from way back in 2019. I'm looking at it right now and I can see that there's already a lot of improvements we can do to it, but that's probably a topic for maybe the end of the stream or a different stream. So tonight we're just gonna strictly put VIA into this. So the first thing I like to do to put VIA or to enable VIA in your QMK firmware is as easy as making a new key map. As you can see, under the key maps directory, there is a key map called default. To make things easy for us, I'm just gonna copy that. There we go. And no, let's not call it default copy, let's call it VIA. The VIA key map should always be called VIA. Right then and there. So at this point, this is exactly the same as what default is. So you do need to edit this a little bit. If you've never seen VIA before here, actually, if you've never seen VIA before, let me just show a quick demo using my Hive 60. So my Hive 60 has a Waldo PCB. Come on, come on VIA, boot up. There we go. This is the VIA app right here. And as you can see, VIA supports only up to four layers, being zero, one, two, and three, all that. And you can dynamically edit your key map just like that very easily. You can add your own macros just like that. Um, you have a key tester as well, all that, all that good stuff. So you can change all of your layouts. For example, your split backspace right here you can change that on the fly, just like that. Super simple, super easy. So we need to tell QMK that VIA has four layers. So the way to do that in this case is to modify the keymap.c file and actually add four layers. See, Nuclear Monster says, is if VIA is closed source, I wonder how it safely uses QMK stuff without violating GPL. I don't think it's actually touching any of the QMK code. That's the thing. Here we go. Because all, all of the QMK portions are still open source. I believe that's how they're, they're getting past it. So the way I like to do this is just to define another layer. But Merlin, what if you don't have anything to put in those other layers? That's, that's completely fine. The only reason why we're doing this is because if we leave this blank, what's gonna happen is in VIA, those additional layers, layers two, two and three is gonna be filled with garbage information. So you wanna quote unquote initialize it by actually putting something useful or something generic like KC trans on like everything. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's put KC trans on all the other keys, just like that. Here. Here we go. Oh, I'm not showing my screen. Here we go. KC trans on everything. Yeah, most people only use two layers, layers zero and one. So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like there's, there's really no need to add any more to this layer, if I say so myself. So I'm just gonna quote unquote zero it all out. so to speak.
Dicky Jimmy redeemed. Ask me anything. Is there a way to put Via on the drop out? No, there is not. Unfortunately. It is not a possibility at this moment. All right. Let's see. Just so I can make sure I did this correctly, I'm just going to try and compile compile really quick. Alan says, what is Via? Okay. Um, here. Alan, do you have any experience with using QMK? But only 67 arguments given. Here, let me... Let me fix this up. Oh, there we go. There's the missing comma. Right there. Javon says, what are your thoughts on ZMK? Um, I think ZMK is fine. I'm glad that there are other farmers out there. Alan says, no. Do you have any experience with programming keyboards in any shape or form? Meaning like changing your key maps and all that. There we go. Let's change my window. Alan says not keyboards. Okay. So you don't so you've never changed your key map on a keyboard. Okay. So for the longest time, if you had a QMK powered keyboard, what would happen is that you would make your key map and then you would compile it into your firmware. Your firmware would then be flashed onto your keyboard and no matter how small the change is, maybe you wanted to change your A key to a B key, maybe move your control key around, you would still have to flash your board. And if you've seen any of the help topics on Reddit or Geek Hack lately, or for the last two years, it's always people having trouble with flashing their board, flashing the wrong firmware whatsoever. With VIA, VIA allows you to have a GUI, a graphical user interface, which will allow you to change key maps without flashing your board. Basically, here, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of how this is done. Here we go, here we go. Let's, let's bing up, let's, let's go bing up V again. Here we go, there's V, right? And here is my Hive 60. So for example, I could just create a macro. Here, let's put it on, here we go. Let's put the macro on my Q key right there. And for macro zero, I'm gonna say, hi, Alan, how are you? Type enter at the end of the macro and save. So if I had done that in QMK, I would have needed to code that using C and then compile it and then flash. But just in a span of what, seven, eight seconds, I've already done that. So check this out, check this out. I'm, I'm gonna type something in chat right now. Let's see, I did that FNQ. Watch chat. See? In seven, eight seconds, I was able to make a macro just like that. So yeah, that is the strength of VIA. Um, for most people, VIA is a godsend. Like, of course, if you do if you do like lots of custom stuff, if you if you actually have a very custom key map that that controls your your lighting for certain apps for certain combinations, and you have more than just your average text macro, then yeah, VIA might be too underpowered for you. But for the common folk, for people for people like me who have a very basic key map. Via Via is great. Via is absolutely wonderful.
Let's see, Nuclear Monster says you could also do it in the configurator. Yes, you can. You can absolutely still do it in the configurator, but that's the same process. Like rather than you compiling, um, the configurator is having the server compile your compile your firmware, which you then download and still flash. Bon Bon Boy says, how would that work with Control and Alt and all those? Um, are you talking about drop boards? Are you talking about the actual keys? Um, can you clarify your question? Okay. So while he's clarifying his question, we're going to add that fourth layer right there. Okay. He said the modifiers them, themselves. What, what about the modifiers? All right. Bacon and Tuna says, I need to get VIA on the soldered KBD67 Mark II PCB. It should have already come with VIA unless you bought yours like in 2019, November. Bon Bon Boy says, like, would you be able to apply those in VIA or would you need QMK? Oh, so you're trying to put like control and all that into a macro. Um, in a certain sense here, you do have options within within the VIA GUI to, to pick those, those, those key combos. If not, you can always use like the any key in order to simulate them. VIA is a GUI for QMK, so all or most of QMK key codes will work in VIA. All right, here we go, here we go. So we all have four layers now. The last two layers are all just blank, just KC trans, KC transparent. That's fine, that's fine. The next thing you wanna do, this is the part where you're actually enabling VIA, is you wanna create a new file called rules.mk rules.mk right here and here these are this is the magic syntax right here this is what enables via watch closely it's just via underscore enable equals yes via is enabled at this point <laughs> via is enabled at this point Right, but because this is a boot mapper client board, we do need to have, we do need to be a little careful. Um, boot mapper client boards are, are a little bit more complex. So hold on, pardon me while I glance at my notes. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yes, I forgot one, one more thing. Um, this isn't required, but I like to put this in. The thing is, um, VIA does use up a lot of space and on smaller boards or on smaller microcontrollers like the AVR ones, Atmega 32U4 or what's specific on this board, Atmega 32A, you wanna use as less space as possible. So another thing to add that I highly recommend, but not mandatory, is LTO enable equals yes. LTO stands for link time optimization. It makes your firmware as small as, as possible. It's optimized. XXYYXX says, I'm in the middle of making my KBD19X. Previously you said your code for KBD19X via compatibility was under review. Were there any updates? Um, I'd have to look. Here, let me look for you. Here we go. Let's go to caniuseviacom Supported keyboards. Let's go look, let's go look. Search for KBD19X. Oh, well, looks like it's not in there yet. 
Okay, it's probably not in there yet. We'll see, we'll see. I can't even remember if I filed it. Hold on, let me... Let me check, let me check. Mm -mm -mm. Pull request. Did I file it? If not, maybe I'll file it right now. Oh look, looks like someone did put it in already. Look, open 17 days ago by Fat Boy. That's odd. I vaguely remember putting it in. Let's see. Added KBD 19X win keyless layout. Oh, he must have just added a different layout and then modified it in via and then added it in. Oh, I'm confused. I'm confused. All right, well, no, we can dig into that a, a different time. Right now, I just want to get via onto this. Here we go, okay. So yeah, at this point, we got via enable equals yes, LTO enable equals yes. And it looks like I have some other issues here. No such file or directory. Probably did not pull the changes properly. So hold on, let me try and fix that really quick. Mm -mm -mm. I could probably have to do a make git sub modules or something like that. It's, it's, it's doing its thing. Am I spelling it wrong? Sub module. Go. Go, go do your thing. There we go. There we go. It's doing its thing. Javon says, what's in that board? Sounds good. Um, this is the, this is the Hive 60. This is the gasket mount 60% that recently went on group by. Um, these are just Gateron yellows. Lubed Gateron yellows. And believe it or not, these are the pre-tooled GMK stabs. All right. I just ran the make git sub modules. I should be able to to build it now. There we go. It's building. It's building. And there we go, it's built. We now have a VIA enabled QMK firmware. And if I had that PCB in front of me, I would flash it onto that PCB, but I don't have it. I don't have it. It's it's back in, in the Netherlands at this point. <laughs> so the next thing that we want to do is actually to move over and create the VIA JSON. This is the second half of, of the VIA porting process. So here we go. Earlier I mentioned going to canIuseVIA.com. The rest of this stream will essentially be me following this process right here. Like, the second half is to create a JSON file with the following properties. Then these are the following properties. You need a name, you need a vendor and product ID, which I forgot, so we'll have to go back. There'll be lighting, matrix, all that good stuff. So yeah. I completely misspoke. I forgot this part. 
vendor and product ID. So let's actually go back. Let's actually go back to the code right here. Right here. Um, if we go to config.h, we need to edit these two things, the vendor ID and the product ID. So the way that via knows what board that, that you have, like here, let me show you an, ex an, an a, another example. Say la la luck. Right now. So I unplug the board, right? When I plug it in, VIA detects it automatically. And of course, because sometimes VIA is finicky like that, you have to unplug and plug several times. There we go. See? The way that VIA is able to do this process, de detecting what board you've got, is by matching it to the vendor ID and product ID. And get this, these have to be unique, not just within the QMK firmware space, but internationally around the world. And you can actually pay to make sure that yours is absolutely unique, that no one else can use your vendor ID and product ID convention, but that only works if you've got $5,000 and not everyone has five thousand dollars so people like us people here in, in the keyboard space we just pick a vendor and product id that is unused in the hopes that no one's going to actually use it somewhere down the line so let's see this was a combination of rama tgr all those folks I know Rama PCBs these days have Wilbus vendor ID, so we don't really want to do that because it's not really a, a Wilba PCB. Um, I suppose we could do it the TGR way. I think TGR's vendor ID is 5447. And if you're curious what these are, 5447 in hex is actually just TG. TG for TGR, you know. Joey Carrio says, do you have 5K? Um, sure, but not for stuff like this. <laughs> so Query Edu, Edu says, what if someone uses it down the line? If someone uses it down the line, um, we'll probably ha have to change it. That's the thing. That's the, that's the drawback of just trying to find stuff that's unused, you know? Let's see, product ID, since this is the very, man, I'm, you know what? I don't want to use TGR, it's just cause. Yeah, let's not use TGR. It's like, I don't want this to show up as a TGR board. Cause it's, it's, it's really not. He was just involved in the project. Let's do, man, he did make the PCB. So it, it makes sense that he's the vendor. Absolutely makes sense that I would put him as the vendor. So yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Xenophobia says that'd be 5k for every QMK keyboard. So no. <laughs> How about QC for quad Q because it's right there already. That's true. That's true. Let's just do that. QC. Is QC taken? Is QC taken? So the place I like to go to for all this stuff is this, the USB ID database. So first we need to convert QC to QC ASCII to hex. What's QC? QC in hex is 5143. So what, is that taken? 5143, search. Nothing found, perfect, we can use 5143. 
Sark says it's 5k per oh really I thought I thought it was a one-time fee but 5k per year oof that is a lot of money well I guess if you're a small company 5k per year would would be painful but here we go let's go back to the code let's see I did 5143 5143 for quad cube QC QC product ID exempt you could probably call it a mm, let's try this EX let's try EX EX is 4558 there we go 4558 EX for exempt there we go that should do it that should be good. Okay. So now let's just compile that again. Compile all this good stuff. So as, as I explained earlier, this PCB is currently in the Netherlands. So it's not like I can readily test it. I shipped it out long, long, long ago before I even joined, be, before I even started doing any VIA work, to be honest. If I had been doing VIA work back then, I totally would have converted this to VIA, but yeah, I just, I just wasn't at the time. Query Edu says, you can use 5143 for now. Yes, exactly, for now, for now. All right, let's see, what do I want to do next? Oh yeah. I was explaining that we wanted next up next up we we want to make the via json file and the via json file like its properties can be derived from can i use via.com basically this json file needs to have a name vendor and product id which we just did lighting if any i guess you can set it to none if there's none there's you need to define your matrix size row 1 and 16 let's see this one would be 7 by 14 so you know that already and the layouts so in my opinion every time you craft this file i always like to start with the layouts right here this thing right here how do you make this you make this by going to keyboard layout editor and right now we have a generic 60 percent so we're just going to modify this so it looks like a 65 My Tom says, is it possible that after porting to VIA, the firmware has performance issues like respond slower than stock QMK? Um, not that I have noticed, to be honest. And if you are asking because you're concerned about gaming performance, um, I can almost guarantee that, you know, you would have to be like the top of your game, world champion, in order to have it affect you. Okay, let me look at the... Wait, no, that's the S7 Elephant. I want the actual exempt. Okay, let's see. The base layout's got... Where's that layout photo? Here we go. We'll do... Oh, that's funny, look. They advertise these are the layouts available, but when you look at the photo, you see f f six one use to the right. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Layout layouts advertised are different. Let, let me just check the config file really quick, or rather the layout macro. You can see that really easily. Exent. Oh, 
Okay, so layout 65 ANSI is indeed an option there. So let's just do layout 65 ANSI. We can do that, not a problem. Layout 65 ANSI has the six one use to the right of the space bar and everything else is standard layout. Perfect, we can do that. No problem. No problemo. There we go. Layout 65 ANSI is done. See, my Tom says, just found out the CRKBD has a via port, but the side connector with the audio cable is lagging like really hard on my end. Oof. That's not fun. Okay, let's see. Let's color a few things in really quick. One, one requirement for VIA is that you make sure all your mods and alphas are colored in appropriately. So let's do that really quick here. Oh wait, this needs to be changed too. This needs to be 1.75U. Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's color these all in. So the trick is because Via has GMK Olivia by default and will probably always have GMK Olivia by default, you need to match it using the GMK Olivia colorway. Xenophobia says, you need to split the right shift. Ah, yes, I did. There we go. Okay. So the next thing that you want to do, this is this is the key part, which I think is the hardest part of putting via support in. Like hard, well, not so much hard, but more strenuous, I guess. Strenuous and a lot of counting. You want to fill out all of these with certain numbers. So let's just pre-fill these really quick. On the top left, you need to fill them out with a set of two numbers. And right now I'm just guesstimating as to what they should be, but you will see why in the next bit. Okay, so all of these numbers, zero comma zero, one comma zero, the first number designates the row, the second number designates the column. And you know, I, I can usually guess what the first ones are, but the way to know for sure is you have to have to look at your keyboard's layout macro. Your keyboard's layout macro is found here. This is it. This is in keyboard.h, in this case, xn.h. So if you look at this, we were modeling it after the layout 65 ANSI, so you want to copy this, right? So in our case, it's 0, 0, 0, 001, 0, 02, 0, 03, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 5, 3. So that's what we need to do. We need to do the same corresponding change in our layout macro. So I'm actually just going to have, have this opened up to the side here. So I'm not switching between the two over and over again. Let's do this. Or... So yeah, this is the longest part of VIA support. I, I always say I'm gonna write a, a, a script to do this, but I just never get around to doing it. Maybe on a day where there's actually nothing for me to port, no, nothing has caught my eye, I'll just do it. See, that last one was a 5-3, okay. 
There we go. Five, three, second row. It goes one, eight, one, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wait, hold on. Hold up. Hold up, okay. Yep, I screwed up already. <laughs> like I said, this is quote unquote the most difficult part because you tend to screw up with all of your counting. Or maybe it's just me. Who knows? Thirteen and the last one. There, you can see that that last one is a five two. Five two. So just a quick history thing here. For the most part, a lot of a lot of boot mapper client PCBs have this completely all over the place. It's not as sequential as this. TGR, Uxie actually started taking like the boot mapper client design, but organizing it in a very readable manner. Makes things so much easier. But I guess he still hasn't been able to get away on this rightmost column. And the last one is 5-1. All right, two more to go. Three, zero, three, two, perfect. Three, six, three, seven. Three eight, three nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. And this one is five comma zero. There we go. Last row. Hooray. Four zero four one four two. Then it jumps to four five, then four seven, four eight, four nine. Last three keys is 10, 11, 12. Okay, easy peasy. 10, 11, and 12. And there we go, we are done with the base layout. We're done with the base layout. But if you guys remember when I when I had the Via app open, you could change like your your 2U backspace into a split backspace. You could change your shift key into a split shift and all that. Right now, the way that, that this is, you can't do any of that yet. And the way to do that is to organize all of these options into groups. So here we go. Let's work on doing that really quick. So you can go here, go back to QMK Configurator. I like to use QMK Configurator when I'm doing this because I'm a very visual guy. Like I can't look at a key map. I can't look at this and imagine what it looks like, right? 
I need to actually look at this. Look at this. This this makes more sense to me. So let's see. It's got your typical ISO support. And for layout all. Okay. You can absolutely do this. Absolutely do this. Let us separate them out by groups. Let's give ourselves some room. Okay. So when we do things by group, Wilba states that you want to do this the way that you read English, basically from left to right, top to bottom, like that. So using that methodology, the very first group is actually going to be, oh shoots, hold on, there we go. The very first group is going to be your backspace. So you want to give this group zero, and the second number will be the option. This is the base option, so, so call it zero. Next up, you want two keys right there. Two keys. Two keys, just like that. And this is part of the same group. This is the backspace group. So that's group zero comma option one. You will also then need to figure out what these keys are, right? So definitely one of them is going to be zero 13. And I'm gonna bet, I'm gonna bet that, actually I'm not gonna bet because I'm completely wrong at that point. It's six D. So that's actually, 0, 13, and then 6, 13. There we go. Foul. Fallen says, finally can catch a stream. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining in. I'm on the second half of the via port. All right. The second, the second group that's in here by going left to right, top to bottom is going to be our enter key. And in that case, this is gonna be ISO. So here we go, let's add the ISO key. ISO enter, there we go. It, that is exactly what I want right there. Sumex redeemed spoken word for 3000. All right, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Sumex, do you know what spoken word is? Just out of curiosity. There, let's go set this up. All right, Sumex, this is just for you. Well, of course, because develop then will play down which out public over same with this man and present little develop I call not right line such people plan leave begin down off head to for since line but stand govern because good systems from around early high, a high form. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nuclear monsters redeemed hydrate. Oops, I don't actually have my, have my drink here. I guess I'll just take a little sip of this. <laughs> Sean Buller says, that was beautiful. I've also got chanting options, which I'll do next. <laughs> The next time someone does it, I'll do it in like a different style. <laughs> there we go. Jomi says my body is ready. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. Okay. This is our second group, so group group one. Base layout, option zero. Jomi says, so deep, so powerful. <laughs> there we go. Now I have to figure out what keys these are. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the code again. What keys were these? What keys were the ISOs? The ISO keys were... 
<laughs> oh, that's odd. Okay, there, there might be something wrong with this. Might be something wrong with this. But I'm just gonna... From what I've seen from other TGR boards, I'm going to assume what the pins are. I'm just gonna have someone else check this when the time comes. But typically speaking, what TGR likes to do is the ISO enter is the same pin, the, the, the same row and column as the ANSI enter. So that's gonna be 212 just like that. And this extra key here, this guy right here, um, this one ends up becoming what the what the pipe key was in ANSI. So this would be 113, like so. Let's see, just, just from my experience porting other TGR boards, this is what he does. Um, that's not actually represented in the layout macro quite correctly, but I just have no way to test this anymore because I don't have a PCB. So yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. We're gonna move on to our next group. Let's give ourselves a little room. So it's this next group is going to be the left shift right here. Looks like I could use a little bit more room. There we go. Well, I guess I didn't need that much room. <laughs> there we go. So this one's going to be 1.25. Okay. And this one's usually the the easiest one. As you can see, it's skipping it. And based on the code, it's definitely 3-1. So 3-0, 3-1. And this is group number two. So it's two, option zero, two, option one, like so. We're good, we're good. Next up, next up is the bottom row. So the way I like to do this is I take, hold on, let's take a look at all these options. Okay, okay. Let's give the 6.25U options first. Let's do that. Let's do that, okay. So we'll do this one, copy, paste. Okay, one of the options, actually, hold on, hold on. Mm. We have to figure out all the different permutations of the 6.25 U spacebar. So if you've got all 1.25 U's on the left and only the right side changes, it's the three one U's or the two 1.5's. Then on the left, mm, Okay, I get it. Let's just do it like this.
Okay, so that's actually four seven and four eight. Okay, we've got that option. Okay, so we've got non-split 6.25 with the three one use and non-split 6.25 with the two 1.5 use. So now we got a, whew, this is gonna have lots of different options. I wonder if there's a way I can consolidate this better. You know what, I'll, I'll just list them all out. Copy, paste. Yeah, this is where it starts getting confusing. Oh, forgot to turn my music back on. There we go. And let's see, that looks like a 2.75, 1.25, 2.25. Let's go with that. Two point seven five. Oh, I did the wrong one. Two point seven five. Not three point seven five. Two point seven five. One point two five. Followed by. 2.25, like so. Okay, so that's one permutation. And then the other permutation is, it's reversed, okay. This starts to get real messy. Zeboba's redeemed spoken word. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Here. I'm gonna do the chant that you guys wanted, or the one that I wanted to show you. Here we go, let's go back to typings. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're gonna do an incantation so that all of you guys will have good luck. Good luck on your, on your keyboard purchases and raffles. Call by stand, problem go thunder point at home, need most out course, increase it, use same order, keep first, bird bolt, open or order small, each no see, keep where and here and just help be asked, know who, become consider, come about to draw home, use tell people. There we go, there we go. <laughs> A different kind. A different kind of spoken word. <laughs> Bz, that what did I just walk in on? I was doing a incantation to give everyone on stream good keyboard raffle luck. <laughs> See, I'm trying to change up like the style every time I do it. <laughs> there we go. Maybe we'll do a high pitched voice next time. We'll do a high pitch voice next time. Alan says redeemed hydrate 400. <laughs> yeah, I don't have my water with me, so I can't can't quite do that. It also says Merlin is possessed. <laughs> all right, let's go back. Let's go back to doing this. I have to I have to do all the permutations here. All the possible permutations. Mm. 
No, I wonder if I could just do it where it's... Because at this point, I'm going to have to create three more and then a fourth for the 7U space bar. I'll just make that an entirely different different group. Yeah, let's 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 see if that's possible. Let's try that. Let's try that. Let's try that. I'm gonna make this guy right here one group. I'm gonna make the 6.25U another group. And I'll call it like the 6.25U group. There we go, there we go. I can do that, I'll do that. I'll do it like that. Like so. Split it out. Split it out like that. Alan says, I'll be back if you're still streaming. Hopefully, hopefully this can be done. Oh, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, keys can't be part of two groups. But I can definitely... Oh, am I a little quiet now after the incantation? Probably. Here, let's uh, bring up the volume again. There we go. How's that? How's that? How's that? Is that better? Burgers Lastro redeemed hydrate. I don't have a drink right now, but here, let me go grab my water. You know what? Instead of water, maybe I'll grab like OJ or something. Hold on. BRB. BRB. Here, I'll let you guys take a look at my keyboard. Five sixty. Here we go. Hydrating from Burgers Lastro. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I think I just got some clarity. I think I know what to do now. This guy right here, the right side of the space bar, will be its own group. And then I think everything else will be different. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, here we go. There we go. And then the last one, the last group is gonna be the seven U guy right here with the two 1.5s. We can do that, we can absolutely do that. Copy, paste. One point five. One point five. And this guy's gonna be seven. Boom. Just like that. Burgers Last World says it was hydration brings clarity, of course. <laughs> X Reaper says, just checking in before I go to bed. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Probably just about to finish the via port, actually. Here, let me... Okay. The last group we made was group two. So this guy right here will be group three. Like so.
There we go. So group three, option zero, option one, two, and three. And this one will be group four. There we go, we got it. This is the way that we wanna organize it. Whew, okay. That's good, that's good. Okay, the next thing we need to do though is figure out what pins these guys are. The split space bar is completely weird. Let me go look at the code again. Code, what can you tell me code? Here, let's look at QMK configurator. Lay out all one, two, three. So according to QMK configurator, it's four, 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 five, four, seven. Okay. Four, 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 five, four, seven. And it should be the same thing on the next one. Four, 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 five, four, seven. Which then doesn't make sense. Did I do that correctly? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, 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 five. Oh, of course I screwed it up. It's not four, seven, it's four, six. Okay, and this one is four, five. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we go, that should be it, that should be it. Xenophobia says you have four, seven as one of the right-hand mods. Ah, you caught it, yes, I did ca catch it. Edric Garcia says, hi, hello, Edric Garcia. And I see a couple of you have subscribed here. Thank you, Midnight Bomber. Thank you so much. All right, okay, what's next? What do I need to do here? Um, does everything look correct? Are all keys in the right location? Yeah, I think we're good. I think we are good. All right, so at this point, we want to switch re repositories. So earlier, earlier, this code that you were seeing right here, this stuff right here, this is all happening within QMK firmware. So QMK firmware is maintained by people like myself, Xenophobia, Zark, and quite a few others. Um, we will be transitioning to the VIA repo, who is, which is maintained by people like Olivia and Wilbo. This is a completely different repo, completely different set of policies and people who run it. So here, let me go set that up really quick. Dun Hanel redeemed hydrate. Thank you. Drink some water. All right. Let's see, I don't even know if my via directory is up to date. Let me update that really quick. Do 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 do. do. Oh wow, lots of new VIA boards added, perfect. Hundred thirty-three commits. Okay, it's been a while since I've updated this. Great, great. Okay. Come on, VS code. Yeah, I've been noticing that my computer's been getting slower lately. Maybe it's time for a for an upgrade. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so as I was saying, this is an entirely new repository right here. This is not QMK firmware. 
This is via. This is via. This is the via keyboards directory. Via via the app itself is not open source, so you have to be part of part of the team in order to access that. So what we want to do here is create a new directory. Actually, the the exent should be on its own. So what I've noticed that via does is we throw it in a directory called other. Let's see where's the other directory. Here we go, other, like so. You want to throw in a new directory called exempt, and then within exempt, create a file called exempt.json, just like that, All right? And right now it's it's completely empty. There's there's nothing in it, and because I'm lazy, I like to go look at another keyboard that I've done, such as the Gray Studio HB85.json and basically copy and paste it. Copy and paste. The reason why I do that is there's lots of formatting here that I don't wanna to have to type out myself. So let's just erase all the stuff that doesn't make sense for this board, such as the key map right here. Let's just erase that. Make sure you do, do the correct brackets, bracket to brackets, right? And name, we'll call that exempt 65. Um, vendor ID, what did I set the vendor ID to be? I set the vendor ID to be something 51 something. Here we go, 5143. So this has to match your QMK firmware exactly. Otherwise, VIA can't detect it. 4558. Lighting, QMK RGB light. Yeah, makes sense. Matrix, matrix size was seven and 14. There we go, perfect. Get a pre-built on Black Friday, 30 AT build on Best Buy will go for a 1.5 to 1.8K. Oof, okay, so that's the thing. Um, I currently run a Hackintosh and every Every time that I need to upgrade, I always regret not ha having a Hackintosh because it's so hard to get the right combination of text files and hardware. Like once I, one, once I do get it, I absolutely love the combination. Everything works just fine, but it's getting there. It's, it's, it's getting to that destination that I find the most difficult. So every time, every time it comes time to build a new computer, I'm like, well, crap, maybe I should just you know, spend a little bit more money or maybe spend a lot more money and buy an actual Mac Pro. Who knows, that is the, that is the question. That is the age old question. <laughs> All right. Fallen says Hackintosh kills you. It is very hard to maintain. All right, so basically we want to create our groups based on this. So the first one is split backspace. Yep. Next one is ISO enter. Yep. Split left shift. Yep. We do not need a split right shift. Next one should be bottom row. Okay, so here's the thing. The way that you have the labels right here, if it's only one item, it shows up as a toggle key, yes or no, on or off. If you have it like this as an array, the first item is going to be the label and the next few items will be a drop down menu. So here, let's do split left shift. Here we go, this will be Bottom row. Six point two five U. Split one, split split two, and the last next one will be seven U. Okay. And last but not the least is going to be, what label should we do this? 
You know what? Right. Right modifiers. Let's call it 1.25U or 1U 3X1U or 2X1.5U. And I think we're good. Okay, we've got the labels correct. Got the labels correct. Next up is the key map. Oh, sorry, I was not even showing that. Completely not even showing that, but here. There you go, we, we, we made all of these labels. These are all the different groups available. The so zero, one, two, three, four. So next up, we need to make the actual key map, which is just this, just this guy, actually. Click on raw data and download the JSON file. Open up the JSON. Here we go. Copy this whole thing and toss it in the key map property like that, like so. And you're done. You're done with the via JSON. But of course, you want to test this and make sure that this works. The way to do that is to load up via. So right now, V is detecting my my Hive 60. What what you want to go do is go to your settings tab right here, and make sure your show design tab is toggled on. So as you can see, if I toggle it off, I lose that design tab. So make sure it's toggled on. Go to your design tab right here, and load up that exempt JSON that you just created. Let me find that. And if you did this correctly, it should show up pretty much like how your KLE did. And there we go. It worked. Exact 65%. Perfect. Yeah. So. You know, this, this is the most I can test it. As I said earlier, I do not have the actual PCB anymore. So this is the best I can do. This is, the, this is the best I can do. But I do like to show this. Once you've loaded this up, you can see the matrix. <laughs> this is how this board is wired up. Not, not so pretty. If I say so myself, but it works. It works. <laughs> All right. Voluntas Max will never go on sale. Um. Apple. Apple themselves don't have the sale, but third parties do. For example, um, I've seen Macs go on sale at Best Buy. I've seen them on basically like your favorite Apple third party retailer. Like here in Washington, we've got something called Simply Mac. And every now and then I just see like really good sales on, on like MacBooks. Mac minis and stuff, but keep in mind, they're all going to be like slightly older. Ka Kawiya says, I'm waiting for the new ARM based ones. Oh yeah, for sure. Still quite pricey, but fairly cheap. Apple only has the back to school sale. Yeah. Speaking of Apple and completely tangential to the stream, anyone here interested in getting the new iPhone 12? Fallen says so the apple stand was quite a meme. That chunk of metal was more than the iron 180 brass. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Buller says, yeah, iPhone 12 Pro. 
Yeah, I think, um... I am an Android user. I have a Galaxy S10e that I've had for well over a year at this point. You know, and this new version of iPhone does, does quite appeal to me. So we'll see. Whenever this guy dies, I might upgrade. Like, I'm pretty much Apple everything else anyway, so... <laughs> SimX says, nope, gonna, we're going to wait till my old iPhone dies and think of replacing it. Plus, Max is a great camera. Yeah, the Max has, like, a completely different camera than the rest of the lineup. And there's also, like, Apple Pro Res or something like that. Apple Pro Res codex for their iPhone footage and stuff. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It, it is quite a large chunk of money just to spend a thousand bucks. But to be honest, some people spend hundreds, some people spend thousands on boards. I'd say you get more more mileage out of your phone than, than your keyboard. My Tom says, same, S10e, but just got a Pixel 4a as an, as an untraditional upgrade. Nice. Yeah, this phone has lasted me for quite a while. I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I've been Android ever since Android came out, so it, it... It'll be a strange shift, but my wife uses iPhone, so I guess I'm... And, you know, I work with Apple products at work. So moving over is not going to be such a big, big change for me. It'll just make all my other things here work better, I guess. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, anyway. As I was saying, this is probably the best I can do in terms of the porting tonight, because the PCB has already been shipped to, to the Netherlands. When, when I first ported this into QMK, I don't think I, I had even heard of VIA. Maybe VIA was just like in its infancy. So did not even think about porting it then. But I guess at the, at the end of the stream, I will be sending both these files to the two people I know who have Xents. And if I hear positive reviews from them, then I'll file this as a PR. Well, actually, to be fair, I can file the QMK PR because that's I'm pretty sure that that will work. Um, it's this one. It's it's the PR for the Via JSON. This guy right here. This guy right here is that is the one that I'm not sure. Like I'm I'm fairly confident that I got the labels correct. I'm fairly confident that Via will detect it properly. But there's nothing. You know, you can't be a hundred percent sure until you test it on hardware. So so that's what I'm going to be doing. Well, that's what my my testers will be doing, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I think at this point, that's the best I can do. So thank you everyone for joining the stream. If you want to see a more comprehensive porting, make sure you check out my other VODs currently on YouTube. And I promise, I promise, I promise, there will be a actual shorter version of how to port via very very soon if you if you've been paying attention to my porting with ports series i am slowly but surely progressing episode by episode um it won't be the following episode because the following episode will we'll talk about creating your own key map but it should be the episode after that but yeah at the time being just watch these these vods um click on all of the timestamps if you want to fast forward through it but this is this is the best this is this is the best porting with port stream all right guys hope you have a good rest of your tuesday um and have a good rest of your night good night now